Okay, I'm going to go through another common scripture that non-dispensationalist heretics like to twist to try to prove that everyone in the Old Testament was saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a common non-dispensationalist lie that people in the Old Testament were saved the same way we are today. And I debunked a common scripture they love to use, which is Galatians 2.16. I debunked that one because they love using that one as well. But another common scripture you'll see them twist is Galatians 3.8. And they'll twist this verse, the heretics, the non-dispensationalist Catholic heretics, because non-dispensationalism is a Roman Catholic heresy. They'll twist Galatians 3.8 to teach that Abraham was saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? I'm going to read Galatians 3.8 for you. It says, And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So notice how the verse says, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. And this was preached to, to Abraham when God said, in thee shall all nations be blessed. In other words, it's not the gospel that's being preached to Abraham. It's a foreshadowing. That's why he says, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. And what's being preached? Is it the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? No. God's saying he's preaching to Abraham, in thee shall all nations be blessed. That's what he's preaching. Uh, turn to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. Genesis 12, 3 is where he says this. This is the scripture that Galatians 3, 8 is referencing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So, what's going on there? Well, in other words, the, in other words, God is not preaching to Abraham that salvation is by death, the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's foreseeing, it's the foreseeing, when God says, in thee shall all nations be blessed, it's a foreshadowing. It's not the gospel being preached to Abraham. This is a foreshadow of the heathen becoming the spiritual seed of Abraham through Jesus Christ. That is why Galatians 3.8 says it was preached before the gospel unto Abraham. It was not the gospel being preached unto Abraham. It was before the gospel was preached that this was, this was foreshadowed. It's a foreshadowing. That's what it was to Abraham. This was done by God telling Abraham that in him all nations will be blessed. It's talking about a future event. It's prophesying a future event. Notice how God doesn't tell Abraham, because if this was the gospel being preached to Abraham, notice how God doesn't tell Abraham that this is how he's going to be saved. He doesn't say that. He's only foreshadowing future events. This in no way does teach this this does not in any way teach that Abraham was saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ like we are today. They're totally twisting what the verse is saying. It's simply a foreshadowing of what's going to happen. That's why it says it was preached before the gospel unto Abraham. And then the, the thing that's being preached to Abraham is talking about how in him will all nations be blessed. Notice how all nations is a future, is, has a future connotation to it. What will all nations be blessed? It's a future event, not happening at, at that time when God was saying it to Abraham. And if that was the case, if God was preaching salvation by faith alone in Jesus Christ, it would cause a contradiction, contradiction in the word of God because Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 and 21, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20 to 27, Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 8 to 9, and many other scriptures prove faith and works in the Old Testament. So if you have Abraham being saved by, if everyone in the Bible was saved by faith alone, then you have a contradiction in scripture because you would have Abraham being saved by faith in Jesus Christ and then these scriptures in Ezekiel and other places proving faith and works. So either there's a contradiction in the word of God or it's either or it's a foreshadowing of future events. You know, it's not the gospel being preached to Abraham like the non-dispensational heretics will twist it to say. So it just it's just amazing how these non-dispensational heretics just twist and contort the scriptures to prove their satanic heresy of non-dispensationalism. And I do say it is satanic because, you know, the real issue of non-dispensationalism is not really oh, how were Old Testament saints saved, because it's blatantly obvious they're saved by faith and works. I mean, what was the point of animal sacrifices? You know, and, and no, animal sacrifices were not symbolic or that kind of stuff, or, or you know, they were not foreshadowings. Scripture is clear that animal sacrifices did pertain to your soul. And, you know, you had to do animal sacrifices to cover your sins, to atone for your sins. It's very, just read, read about the animal sacrifices in the book of Leviticus and the book of Exodus. They were very clearly for an atonement for sin. They would cover your sin. They were not just symbolic. So if it was by faith alone in the Old Testament, there's, there would be no purpose for animal sacrifices. But the real issue is that the non-dispensational Satanists, these heretics who are non-dispensational, they're trying to get people to think that, that when they go into the time of Jacob's trouble, because a lot of them are post-trib as well, which is not surprising, post-trib and non-dispensationalism, go hand in hand. 
they want you to think that when you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, you can take the mark because you're still you're saved by faith alone. You're eternally secure in this time period, so you can go ahead and take the mark. And of course, they'll object and say, well, no true saints would take the mark. Okay, here's how you stump them on that. And I'm going off on a tangent about this because this is a satanic heresy, non-dispensationalism. They'll say that no true saint would take the mark. No true Christian would take the mark. Okay, here's a question that will stump them. If... If a, if a true Christian in this time period, if they know it's the mark and will it willingly take it anyway, if they willfully take the mark anyway, knowing it's the mark, okay, not someone who, who is, you know, deceived in taking it, someone who willfully takes the mark and knows it's the mark and takes it anyway, are they still saved? Because if you say yes, that would contradict Revelation 14, 9 through 11, which says anyone who takes the mark gets, basically goes to hell. So either they're still saved if they take the mark or you know, God just overlooks the fact that they took the mark and keeps them saved. Which is it? I'd love to hear the answer to that. So, again, the question is, if a true saint does take the mark anyway, if they know it's the mark and takes it anyway, because saying that they won't be deceived into taking the mark just still doesn't prove eternal security in this time period. Because it still begs the issue, what happens if they take it anyway? If they know it's the mark and take it anyway, are they still saved? Which, obviously, they're not. But they can never answer that question. They always have to keep deflecting. So bit off topic of the video, but the bottom line is that the non-dispensational Satanists, these heretics who are non-dispensational, they want you to think that there's it's eternal security in every single dispensation and we're saved by faith alone in every dispensation. So when I go into the time of Jacob's trouble, I can take the mark of the beast. Because, hey, I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You know, what's the big deal? It's that simple. So don't be deceived by the satanic, demonic heresy of non-dispensationalism. It is truly a demonic deception at end times deception, this non-dispensationalist Satanism. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.